Hello, Harvest Time family and internet friends. This is Pastor Kurt. The Lord bless you today. And I have a Bible study for you, a follow-up from Sunday. And it's learning and living. Learning and living. And, uh, you know, when we were uh, in the world and or just under basic training, you live and you learn. And then as, as we grow in maturity or we grow also in our capacities, we learn that we can't do it without Christ. No matter where we go in any direction, there's a box canyon and we end up with an echo and it's saying, repent, <laughs> come to Christ. And, and then when we come to Christ and we get born again, Lord willing, then we, we, we learn through the scriptures and through life, and then we learn how to live. So we have to learn how to live and abound in, in the will of God and in the seasons of God. And, and right now the nation is under this, um, it, it's a plague, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a judgment, it's a discipline, it's a, it's a bummer. And our hearts are going out to all people who are hurting uh, and, and people are dying of the coronavirus. They're also dying of the flu, also of heart failure. And, um, you know, there's, there's a number of suicides are up because of the confinement. So our hearts are going out or we're praying with compassion. Uh, and, and God has um, an answer. He wants us to learn from this. And in Sunday's message, I talked about we're in Acts chapter 5. It's, you know, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. So we're, we discussed about uh, Ananias and Sapphira and, and also the, the, the blessing of Barnabas, the son of encouragement in Acts chapter 4. And then why did Ananias and Sapphira, why were they uh, put to death by the Lord? It's a matter of sacrifice. It's a matter of heart priorities now, what I said on Sunday, and I, I believe this with all my heart, that um, Ananias and Sapphira did not go to hell, but their life was cut short because they didn't learn. They were standing in the way of revival. Barnabas had made a sacrifice. He gave up some land. He did it because he loved the Lord. He did it because there was a need. He did it with, with no ulterior motives. And then... God blessed him, and, and he got promoted in the ministry, in the church. But Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted position. They wanted power. They were, they were, they were jockeying in the, in the wrong direction because the church was going to face, uh, a, 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 the, the church was going to face persecution, and the church needed to be holy and ready. And also God was going to pour out signs and wonders, and so in order for it to produce the, the harvest that God was intending, he did have to remove Ananias and Sapphira. And uh, it does say, you know, in Acts, in Acts chapter 5, verse 11, it says that great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. So I believe that God wants a greater uh, fear and awe of his name. He's the one who owns eternity. He's the one uh, that, that called us out of darkness. He's the one uh, is the Lord uh, of, of all the earth and all the nations. And these are the last days. I believe we're feeling uh, some of the birth pains. We're feeling uh, this confinement, this is a time of introspection. This is a time to go deeper in our prayers. And because God wants to, uh, to save, he wants to heal. He wants us to have compassion. In order for us to do that, we do have to uh, die to self. Uh, we need to uh, be in a position of joy. It says in Hebrews uh, 1, 9, that Jesus had more joy than all of his peers. And the reason that he did it was his mindset. He was there on a mission uh, for God. And, and he was there uh, to show forth the self-control because people around us are, are really hurting psychologically. Uh, the mask really brings uh, like a distance. It really br creates a distance. It's hard to talk inside the mask. People don't want to converse as much. They feel awkward. Um, so God is saying that 
It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And we, we do need to learn uh, from Ananias and Sapphira and from Barnabas so that we can uh, be ready uh, to minister. And, uh, you know, Job said this. Uh, it's really powerful. He said in Job 36, uh, verse 26, and then 37, it says, listen, listen to the roar of his voice. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it out to the ends of the earth. Job feared God. And because he feared and reverenced God, he, he listened to God. He went through the trials that he needed to go through, and there were big trials. But he honored God more, and God brought him out and, and gave him twice as much as he ever had before. Uh, also, Moses said in Hebrews 12, 21, Moses said, So terrible was the sight, I exceedingly fear and quake. And, and what Moses was saying is when he saw the power of God on the mountain and the people saw the power of God, they, they trembled. And God wants us to, to tremble at his word. Um, the, these are some of the, I believe, the last day events. This is we're coming nearer to the end of the church age. Jesus is coming for his bride. <laughs> I've been saved now 43 years and we've been talking about the coming of the Lord for, you know, all these years. And, and here we are and, and God is getting his people ready. There's also a tribulation that's coming. And, and what we need to understand is, is that um, Jesus has us. We're in the palm of his hands. He is so loving. He is preparing his bride. Uh, he wants us to know that um, that this is a time of, of preparation. Preparation for his coming. Preparation for uh, ministry and reaching the lost. I was just praying with a neighbor out, you know, and, and they're wondering what's going on. But we're praying. They, they We led them to the Lord. And they're saved and praise God they got Jesus and she's spending time in the word. Um, you know, God is wanting to get us on a, on a foundation um, so that we have a hope and our hope abounds. Um, you know that uh, there's a, a woman and her name is um, uh, Janelle Guzman McMillan. And uh, she was one of the last um, survivors of uh, uh of the 911 attack in in 2001 and she was uh buried under the north tower and uh by her own confession she said she was a party girl she was 30 she was living with the guy she wasn't living right um and all of a sudden now she's buried underneath the uh the buildings and uh, and she began to pray and she began to confess her sins and she said um god I hope that they can find my body. So at least, you know, at the burial service that, um, you know, they'll uh, be able to, you know, send their last, uh, you know, thoughts towards me. And then more hours went by. And then she began to say, well, Lord, I hope that they find my my body and that I can live long enough so that I can see uh, my daughter and, and be able to, you know, reconcile things with her. And, and, uh, and then more hours went by and, and she started uh, really uh, getting faith, was enlarging in her heart. And she began to say, Lord, I want to live. I want to live and I want to be able to share life with my daughter. And God, I pledge my life to you. I give everything to you. God, if you if you get me out of this situation, I will serve you all of my days. And, and that's exactly what happened. She got uh, lifted up from there, and um, she's uh, Janelle is serving the Lord to this day, and she's got a powerful testimony. And um, this is kind of a little, not not as much as you know the 9/11 being buried under the building, but we do feel the confinement, and we're confronted with as much as as we want to think positively, and we should, because Jesus is in control. There's a, a negative vibe when we when we go out and uh, people are are under this oppression and um, and we know it's bigger than the coronavirus and that's why um, we've got to confess our sins uh, get get right with God uh, say the Lord's prayer pray pray more than possibly we ever have before 
And, uh, and God's going to bring us out. In Acts chapter 5, there was an outpouring of signs and wonders. But then also there's uh, more persecution that's going to come. And so I'm going to cover uh, some of that this coming Sunday. Uh, but, you know, we want people to be saved. We want them to, to be ready. We don't want anybody left behind. So will you agree with me in prayer? Uh, together, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that we can learn and then we can live. We can live even in times like this in adversity, God, where where there's some uh, food shortages and there's there's certain things and restrictions of medical care. But God, you care and you are our healer and you are our resource, God, and you are our hope and you are our joy. And we pray right now, God, that joy will come to those who are seeking you, God, that there would be just this deep uh, repentance of, of self and that there'd be a personal revival of righteousness and trust in you, God, in you alone. Christ Jesus alone is my Savior, is my hope, is my future. And so we pray, Lord, that you lose the kingdom now and help us to, to learn from um, these things that we're going through and to apply them and that it would give us more abundant life and also joy to share uh, with others of how we're overcoming, how we're overcoming with the Word and the Holy Spirit. So God bless your people today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day abiding in Jesus. Amen.